Hi everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. I'm so happy that you guys have joined me. This is week one, day one, for a challenge that I have accepted. It's called the Every Bit Counts Challenge, where every day in the month of August, I will preserve something, even if it's just the smallest amount. I'm gonna preserve something every day in the month of August. The Every Bit Counts Challenge started actually last year, last August, by my friend Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead. She has been finding that preserving small amounts more often actually adds up and is less overwhelming than waiting until you have a bunch of produce to can and just spending lots of time and energy to can all of that. So she encouraged people to preserve something every day in the month of August. August is a big harvest time of year for a lot of people who grow big gardens and who homestead. Last year I participated for almost the entire month. I wasn't really public about that because I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it every single day just because of our commitments. But this year I have made a commitment to participate in this every single day. I'm going to be posting every day's preservations on Instagram and then I'm gonna collect all of that information through video for a week and post a YouTube video. And that's what this is. This is the very first YouTube video posted for this Every Bit Counts Challenge. And today is day one. Now today's been a very busy day, including having Kevin's parents over for Sunday supper. They just left not too long ago and now it's just after 8 p.m. and it's the first opportunity I've had to preserve anything. So even though it's late in the evening, I am still going to honor my commitment and preserve something. Now, earlier in the week, I made a chicken, a whole chicken for the family, and we used the meat off of that chicken for two separate meals. And then I decided to hold back the carcass and the skin and put it in a crock pot full of water with seasonings, and I cooked it to make bone broth over the course of two days. So today I have the broth ready to can. It's not a whole lot. It's probably going to be three, maybe four pints of chicken stock. And I'm going to pressure can that today. While it's processing, I might get some other things from the garden chopped up, but we'll see how things go. process for 20 minutes. So I hope that you can hear me even though the canner is pretty loud. While it's processing, I'm gonna get some things ready for the freeze dryer. We have three zucchinis that came out of the garden and we have more actually in the refrigerator. I'm going to dice them. First I'm gonna slice them and then I'm going to put them through this. It's called a Vidalia Chop Wizard. I got this at a thrift store. And make them into little squares and put them on, in, on a freeze dryer tray and put them in the freeze dryer. I am gonna to love to have these available to be throwing into stews and soups like that through the winter. So that is one thing that I'm gonna do. Super easy for me to just chop this up, put them on a tray while these uh, jars of broth are processing and I can just put them right into the freeze dryer. So my canner is off, it is cooling. I need to wait for quite a while before I can take those out of the canner. But in the meantime, Kevin brought me the most amazing bag full of peppers that he harvested from the garden at the farm. It's like a whole 
giant bag of gorgeous green peppers. These are Big Bertha's right here. So I'm gonna dice up some of these and fill up the last two trays um, for the freeze dryer and that will be also part of my preservations for the day. Day one. Well, these four pans are ready for the freeze dryer. Two pans of bell peppers and two pans of zucchini. These will take probably 24 hours to get done, but for day one, I'm getting these into the freeze dryer. Well, it is day two of uh, the Every Bit Counts Challenge. It's August 2nd. Today I am gonna be working on processing the cucumbers that we've been getting out of the garden. We go through quite a bit of dill relish because we use it to make tartar sauce for when we have fish. So that is what I'm working on today. I'm using a recipe from my favorite preserving book called the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. There are 400 recipes in here. This is in our Amazon shop if you wanna take a look at it, but I have like tons of these recipes marked because I love this book so much and it's all worn and weathered and it's you know, gotten wet a couple times. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna be using, the dill relish recipe. Um, and that's what I'm gonna be starting off with today. This recipe calls for eight pounds of cucumbers, but I'm only gonna be using four pounds of cucumbers, so I'm gonna cut everything in half. I am going to can them in like jelly jars, and it should give me about seven jelly jars worth, maybe a little bit more depending on you know, how it works out. So I'm gonna get started on this today. Working in batches, I'm gonna put these cucumbers through a food processor and um, blend them all up until they're coarsely chopped. And then I'm gonna put them in a stainless steel bowl here because we're gonna end up putting um, salt in there and letting them sit for two hours so that a lot of the juices come out of the cucumber. I'm adding a quarter cup of canning or pickling salt. I'm just gonna sprinkle it on here. And then also one teaspoon of turmeric. Adding two cups of water. Now we're just gonna cover this. We're gonna let it sit for two hours. Well, it's been two hours that this has been sitting in the salt water with turmeric. So now what I need to do is dump it through a colander and then we're gonna rinse all of that salt out of there with cold water. I have the next ingredients that we need in another pot, so I'm gonna be squeezing the water out of this cucumber mixture here and then putting it into the other pot. The other ingredients that are in the pot are diced onions, white wine vinegar, and a little bit of sugar and dill seed. I'm just mixing up all the ingredients here. We're gonna bring this to a boil and then we're gonna let it boil slowly for 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna get all of my other canning stuff ready. The water pot, get that water boiling and all of the jars ready and everything. Well, that's all ready to be canned. So this dill relish, we're going to fill until it's a uh, half inch from the top of the jar. And they will process in a water bath canner 
for 15 minutes. It is day three of the Every Bit Counts Preservation Challenge. And uh, I have some tomatoes left over from us picking. We've eaten a bunch, we've given some away. Uh, we've made one batch of pico de gallo and we ate it all up in one day. I also have this many uh, jalapenos left and I have some onions in the house. So I decided to make a batch of pico de gallo and then freeze dry it. We've never freeze dried pico de gallo before, so this will be a first for us. So I'm excited to kind of have the flavor of fresh pico de gallo or summer in the middle of winter when we rehydrate some of this after it's been through the freeze dryer. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm gonna make freeze dried pico de gallo. This is a tomato corer and it makes it so easy to take the cores out of tomatoes. I'm gonna start off by slicing these tomatoes and then I'll come over here in my chopper and chop them into diced tomatoes. Now, if you don't know what pico de gallo is, it's just a fresh salsa. It is generally made of tomatoes onions and some peppers but you can also add in some uh, cilantro cumin garlic salt i'm just going to make it pretty basic today next up are the onions now, when I make pico de gallo, and I, when Kevin makes pico de gallo, neither of one of us follows a recipe. We just cut things up until it looks like the right proportion of things. And so that's uh, what I'm gonna be doing. So we don't really have a recipe to share. I would just suggest that you chop up some tomatoes, onions, peppers, add some salt, maybe some lime juice, and give it a try. And uh, find the proportions that you like and stick with that. So I'm just gonna chop up onion and I'm gonna use my chopper over here like I did before, but I switched to a smaller um, size here. I like smaller pieces of onion, not really big chunks of onion in my pico de gallo. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be doing. That's two onions. Okay, we're gonna move on to peppers. Kevin is saying that these jalapenos are not very spicy. Now we do have the not hot jalapenos and not jalapenos, but these are supposed to be spicy. So I'm gonna add quite a bit of these just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna wear gloves so that that spicy oil doesn't get in my fingers and then later on today I rub my eye and burn my eyeball off. So I'm just gonna be safe. I'm gonna cut these, I'm just gonna cut the stems off and then cut them in half. I'm not gonna take out any of the seeds or anything. And then I'm gonna put them through my chopper with the small attachment. I think that will work really nicely. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt to this, maybe a little bit more. Now I'm actually going to just cover this for a while and let it sit because I want the tomatoes to release more of their juices. I want the pico de gallo to be a little bit 
less juicy and more kind of chunky to put into the freeze dryer. So after it sits and more of the juices come out of the tomatoes, I'm gonna strain this through a colander. It'll actually taste really good. It'll be like a pico de gallo flavored drink in the end. But then I could put more of the, the chunky pico de gallo into the freeze dryer. It's good and it's spicy. Okay, this has been draining for quite a while. I'm just gonna dump it back in the bowl. That's much better. So a couple more things I'm gonna add. I'm just going to take some cilantro here and I'm just gonna cut it with scissors to add some cilantro into there. And I'm gonna add a dash of lime juice. Bloop, bloop. I'm gonna split this between two trays. Well, I'm very excited to see how these are gonna turn out in the freeze dryer. Our freeze dryer holds four trays. This is only two, so let's find something else to put on the other two trays to put in the freeze dryer with this pico de gallo. Well, we have a basket of natapeno peppers, so let's chop these up and put those on at least one tray. Well, I'm working on a basket of green bell peppers. I think we can chop some of these up and fill our last tray. Well, now that we have four trays, we can go ahead and put these in the freeze dryer and in about a day, they will be ready to be packaged up. Okay, hey everybody, it is day four of the Everbit Counts Challenge. Uh, today I have thought out some blackberry juice from last year that I used my steam juicer to extract the juice. It's been in the freezer for a year now, waiting for me to turn into jelly, and I haven't done it, so I decided to take it out and make a double batch of blackberry jelly. Here is the juice. This is seven cups of juice. I'm just gonna make a standard jelly. I know I get a lot of comments from some of you guys about all of the sugar in jelly, but we don't use it, we don't use a lot at a time. And other than that, we don't really have a whole lot of sugar in the house, uh, treats, desserts, and stuff like that. So I don't feel like it's a big deal when we have, you know, a biscuit or something to have a teaspoon or a couple teaspoons of full sugar jelly plus I like to give jelly away as gifts and to other friends who really enjoy it, especially the blackberry jelly. And so I'm just gonna use a standard traditional jelly recipe. We need to add four tablespoons of lemon juice and we're adding two, since I'm doing a double batch, two packages of powdered pectin. We're gonna stir that in really well before we turn on the heat. The recipe I'm using is from my favorite canning book. Once again, it is the berry jelly, one of the traditional jellies within this book. That pectin is all dissolved inside here, so now I'm just gonna turn on the heat to high. And I'm just gonna keep stirring it until it comes to a boil. It's time for me to put in the sugar. Put it in all at once. I know that's a lot, but remember, I'm doing a double batch. Now this sugar juice mixture needs to come up to a full rolling boil, like a hard boil. And then we'll continue stirring it while it boils really hard for a minute. And then after that, we'll be ready to can. Okay, we're just gonna start canning. So jellies, you fill the jars up until they're a quarter inch from the top of the jar. I have hot jars here from the oven. That's good. Just 
going to get the bubbles out. Wipe the rim. Put on a clean lid. It's been washed. And whew, a ring. Put that into my canner. They're all in, so now we just need to put this cover on, turn this on high, and we're gonna process these. Well, I'm gonna process them for 15 minutes because of our altitude, but generally you'd be processing these for 10 minutes. After that, we'll put them on the counter and just admire how beautiful they are. Hey guys, day five of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Just last evening, I picked these gorgeous tomatoes and today I'm going to can them as diced tomatoes. I use diced tomatoes in a lot of soups and uh, mostly soups, I would say, over the winter. And so I need to restock our supply of them and this is a perfect thing to do with these tomatoes. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to take the core you know out of the tomatoes. So I'm just gonna do the same thing with every single one of these tomatoes and when we're done we'll move on to skinning the tomatoes. We're gonna put the tomatoes down in there. Then I just watch them until the skins start peeling off the tomatoes. Ooh. That one's fast. And when they do, then I just take them out and transfer them to the cold water. These tomatoes are cool enough to touch, so I'm just gonna take them out. You can see that the skins just slip right off of there. Put the skins in that bowl and the tomato in that bowl. Well, I've been cutting up tomatoes and putting them in jars. I want to tell you a couple things. I am following the instructions out of my favorite canning book here. You all know I love this. I've talked about it actually a couple times in this video already. I am going to be doing water bath canning for these tomatoes. Tomatoes you can either can or you can either process them in a water bath canner or in a pressure canner. I'm going to be doing water bath canning. I'm going to be doing raw pack tomatoes and I'm not going to be adding any extra liquid. In this book, I just want to read to you, it says packing tomatoes raw with no added liquid produces the most concentrated flavor. However, this method requires extended processing times to ensure that the heat fully penetrates to the center of the jars. So it, this is gonna be the best flavored tomatoes, but it's also gonna be the longest processing time in a water bath canning situation. In this situation, you need to make sure that your acidity is high enough, especially because we're gonna be using the um, water bath canning method. So in order to do that, the instructions say to either add lemon juice or citric acid. For lemon juice, you would add one tablespoon of lemon juice for a pint and two tablespoons for a quart. Citric acid, you would use a quarter of a teaspoon in a pint and a half teaspoon in a quart. I am using pint sized jars this time and I am using citric acid. So I have added one quarter of a teaspoon of citric acid to all of these jars. Salt is optional. I will not be adding salt to the jars of tomatoes. I use them in a lot of soups and that kind of thing. And I just don't add salt to tomatoes when I can them. So with the tomatoes, Really, you can cut them in whatever size you want to. Uh, I cut them in half and then in half again, and then I just cut them into whatever size I want in here. Put them in my jar. See, when you squish them down, it releases all of the juices in there. And then I take um, a chopstick, put it down in there to release any of the bubbles and then press down again. Now the instructions here say to fill these jars up to a half an inch from the top, 
but I actually do a little bit more than that because I have had trouble with um, the stuff siphoning out during the, the, the canning process. Now, like all other canning processes, you'll wipe the rim off of all your jars, put on a lid and a ring and tighten it to fingertip tight. Now with lids these days, these one-time use lids, as long as you wash them well before you use them, you no longer have to put them in hot water or boiling water before you use them. But if that's something that you just can't compromise on because you've been doing it for so long, that's fine too. That's up to you and your comfort level. So that was 35 tomatoes that I picked from the garden and it made 12 pints. All right, let's load these into the canner. All 12 jars are in, so we're just gonna cover that up and get it going. Like I said, the total processing time for these is 85 minutes. I'll be doing 90 because of our altitude. Well, this is it for day number five of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. 12 pints of diced homegrown tomatoes. So you guys, look at what I've accomplished in the first five days of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Now, this is along with everything else that goes on every day on our homestead, on our farm. So I've, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm also feeling really good about the next coming days and weeks. Now, just to recap what I got done in the first five days, I canned 13 jars of blackberry jelly, seven jars of dill relish, three jars of chicken broth, 12 jars of diced tomatoes, plus I did a bunch of freeze drying. Now, every one of these bags is about a quart of freeze dried food. I was able to accomplish three quarts of green peppers, two quarts of zucchini, one quart of natapenos, and four quarts of pico de gallo. That is so satisfying. I can't wait to do more, and I can't wait to harvest more from the garden. Now remember that every day on Instagram, I'm posting updates on what I am preserving each day. But like this week, I'm compiling video into one video a week to show you everything that I've been working on. If you are wanting to follow along on Instagram, make sure you also follow everybody else that's doing the challenge by following hashtag everybitcountschallenge. Also, I really wanna say a special thanks to my friend Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead who created and initiated this challenge. It really motivates me and kind of kicks me in the butt a little bit to do everything that I can for my family, putting food up for the winter and for the rest of the year. You guys, I'm so happy that you are following along with me on this challenge. I hope you are challenging yourself in the same way. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by your homestead. Take care and God bless.